today we're talking about the work energy theorem. What this, this theorem or really equation or formula does is it relates the work of an object to the mechanical energy of a system. So to get a better handle on this, let's write out just a, the basic version of this. What this says is the mechanical energy of an object plus work done on that object is going to equal the final mechanical energy of the object. And that seems pretty straightforward. If you look at this as simply backing up to our definition of work, work being a transfer of energy, if we start with some initial amount of energy and we add or remove some energy, then we wind up with a final value of energy. Uh, it's really just initial plus change equals final. So when we look at this, we can expand this out to make this a little bit more useful. And there's one thing I want to point out here is mechanical energy, we know, is made up of two things. The mechanical energy of an object is given by kinetic energy plus the potential energy. Now, whether you write potential with a U uh, or you want to use something like PE, that's whatever floats your boat, okay? Now, I'm not going to say this is just gravitational potential energy because there are other forms of potential energy that are, in fact, mechanical. But with this and substituting this in here for our initial mechanical and here for our final mechanical, we wind up with this term right here. Uh, so we've got our initial mechanical, that's this, plus our change in energy of the system, plus, or sorry, equals our final mechanical energy. Now there's one thing that really needs to be pointed out here is this work right here is what we call non-conservative work. There's conservative work and non-conservative work. I'll get to what those are in a minute here, but this is only our non-conservative work term. So, if you look in just about any physics text uh, dealing with mechanics, you're gonna find this equation. Uh, now, how they break it down or what variables they use, whether they talk about this is K or KE, or this is PE or U, whatever. You're gonna find this equation in some form in just about every every single physics book ever. Um, but I think there's a better way to look at this to, to help us keep track of what is going on with energy in different problems. And while yes, this mathematically is our link between a problem and its solution, I think there's a better way to think about this and conceptualize this, at least for me. So to understand what I'm talking about, I wanna go through and actually visualize this equation. What I want is, I'm going to take this box, and this box is going to represent the mechanical energy of some object. All right, this could be any object that we choose to deal with. Now, I want you to realize that mechanical energy is broken up into two parts. is kinetic energy and potential. Now, this could be gravitational potential or elastic potential. Uh, we'll, we'll talk about elastic potential more in the future here. We haven't gotten to that yet. We've got these two types of energies that are within this, this category of mechanical energy. And anytime work is done, we ultimately change the total amount of energy in, in an object. So what I wanna do is look at just a real simple situation and we'll try to, try to use this graphic in order to visualize what's going on with this equation. So let's take something simple, like a box. This box has some mass M. I, I really don't care what that mass is. Uh, but we're going to let this box just sit on the ground. So the normal force is acting up on it. And gravity is pulling down on the box. Now, this box is just sitting here. It's not accelerating vertically. So these need to be equal in magnitude. Now, along we come, we're going to push on this box with some force F. And, and that's going to cause this box to move forward through some displacement. So if I push forward on this box, and this box moves through some displacement, then I'm doing work on it. I'm going to ultimately give the box energy. So what I want to do is take this situation and use this graphic to go through and figure out exactly what's going on here, or to help us understand what's going on here. If I push on the box, and it moves, I'm doing work on the box. I'm giving the box energy. Now the box starts at rest, sitting on the ground, so it has neither kinetic nor potential energy to begin. But as I push on this box, ultimately what I'm trying to do is speed the box up. So what's happening is 
there's work being done on this box. This force is acting over a displacement. And so what's happening is there's work being done. This is work being done by some force, what's called a non-conservative force. Now, when I say non-conservative, really here's what I mean. I mean, the force that is doing work is not conserving or it is changing the total mechanical energy of the system. If the box starts with no mechanical energy and some non-conservative work is done on it by this push force acting over displacement, we're ultimately changing the total mechanical energy of the system. Therefore, the total mechanical energy of the system has not been conserved. Hence, non-conservative work. So any force that changes the total energy of a, an object, or really I should say the total mechanical energy of an object, we say that force is non-conservative. So as I push on this box, I'm adding energy to the system. Now, because oftentimes we run into this friction acting on the box. Well, in this case, you can see friction is acting in the opposite direction of the displacement. So as I push this box along and do positive work on the box, that is to say, I add energy to the box. Friction's trying to take it away. And so friction is also doing some non-conservative work. And that non-conservative work is negative. How do we know it's negative? Well, because the angle between friction and displacement is 180 degrees. So going back to our work equation, we could see, how about I write it down? Work being F dot D being F D cosine theta. If the force is in the opposite direction of displacement, cosine is 180, uh, that's gonna give us a value of negative one. We see negative work done. So the way I've drawn these is very carefully here. We've got positive non-conservative work adding to the kinetic energy of this box. Negative non-conservative work taking away from the kinetic energy of the box. But what happens with potential over here? Well, potential is a little bit of a guarded thing and in that a non-conservative force, such as this push force, me pushing on this, whether that be with a rope or a rocket or just getting behind this box and pushing on it, this force is a non-conservative force. Friction is a non-conservative force. And non-conservative forces, they can only ever affect the kinetic energy of an object. Only conservative forces can ever affect the potential of an object. So the question comes up, well, what's a conservative force? How do we affect the, the potential of an object? So what I wanna do is take a little bit different situation here. Let's take this box and lift it. So this time we're gonna lift upward on the box. We'll say this is some force to lift the box. And gravity is gonna act downward on the box. Now, I don't care about the relationship between FL and FG. I just want to make sure I'm lifting this box. If these two are equal, great. If they're not equal, doesn't matter. It's not going to change the situation here as far as how we're choosing to look at this. As I lift this box, I'm not affecting the potential directly. Now, you might be thinking, hey, of course you are. You're lifting the box. You're giving it height. You're adding to its height. And by adding to its height, you're adding to its potential. Oh, no, 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 my friend, and here's why. In the absence of gravity, if I was to push upward on this box, let's pretend we're far, far, far out in space, some point where the net force by gravity was zero. It could be the center of the Earth if you wanted, even. And I was to push on this box. If I push on this box, in the absence of gravity, the box would just speed up. It would only gain kinetic energy. I cannot directly affect the potential. It is gravity which affects the potential. And so as I lift this box, ultimately I'm trying to speed up the box upward, but gravity is keeping it from accelerating too much upward. Now, depending on the relationship between these two forces, that is which one's greater or larger, this box might not speed up at all if those two forces were equal in magnitude. So when I go through with this, to affect the potential Really, I have to have what we call a conservative force at work. 
by lifting up on the box, I'm doing non-conservative work on the box. I'm trying to add to its kinetic energy. But gravity is doing work to turn kinetic energy into potential. So it is only a conservative force that can create a bridge between these two. Now, as I lift this up, the force by gravity is downward, but the displacement would be upward. And so ultimately gravity would be doing negative work. So when kinetic energy is turned into potential by gravity, we get negative work done. If I was to take, and having lifted this box to some point up here, drop it downward, potential would turn into kinetic as the box fell. So the force by gravity downward and the displacement downward would be in the same direction. And we would there see positive work done. You'll notice when gravity does work, it doesn't change the total mechanical energy of this system. It only shifts the mechanical energy from kinetic to potential when it does negative work or from potential to kinetic when it does positive work. So we say the work done by a force like gravity is conservative work. It does not change the total mechanical energy. Now the consequence of this where, where something like gravity doesn't change the total mechanical energy is that that process is reversible. So oftentimes you'll see people refer to conservative forces and conservative work as being reversible processes. Um, but really that, that gets around the, the true definition of conservative forces and work. And really that gets back to, does the force do work that changes the total mechanical energy of the system? Or does it do work that conserves the total mechanical energy of the system? So, this is the work energy theorem. This is how I prefer to look at this through a graphical analysis. And this helps to visualize exactly what's happening in a problem. So like I said, this is the work energy theorem. And that's all for now.